Well, hello, everyone. I'm here today to talk about uh, real-time change data capture, ingestion, and transformation. Um, this is a project that started uh, for me um, in the early stages of private preview back in December. Um, and now it's kind of evolved uh, into a, uh, cust a customer demonstration. Then it moved into uh, a hands-on lab, um, and then a quick start. So, um, so today we're kind of walking through um, the quick start. Um, and then afterwards, you know, you can access our quick start site, uh, quickstarts.snowflake.com, and you can actually uh, go through this same example, because we're going to kind of go through it kind of fast today. So my name is Steven Mazur. I'm a senior sales engineer here at Snowflake. So we're going to kind of walk through that quick start um, and, its, and its capabilities and the capabilities that, that is, it is leveraging that are new and announced here during Summit. And those are Snowpipe streaming and dynamic tables and working those together. So Snowpipe streaming essentially provides you with a client essentially to communicate directly to Snowflake to do ingestion. And Dynamic Tables essentially provides you a purpose-built data engineering object uh, to essentially work directly inside Snowflake to do ELT types of transformations and preparing data from you know, the initial landing table um, to the final forms you know, that the business would like them to be in. So a scenario that we came up with um, essentially was simulating the Dow Jones Industrials 30 stocks. They, they actually have about 200 to 400 million uh, orders per trading day, which ends up being about 10 to 20,000 uh, transactions per second. So what I'm going to do here essentially is from my, my laptop, essentially have a client that will kind of simulate that workload and ingest it directly into Snowflake. This is a Java-based uh, client. Um, just like with Snowpark, we came out with our streaming uh, ingestion SDK uh, with Java first. And it's going to essentially be generating JSON payloads uh, that simulate what a market order looks like. Um, it will be new orders, it'll be updates to orders, and it'll be canceling orders as well. Um, another thing that was part of this use case is that there's sensitive data inside of these payloads. So what we did is we showed how you could do field level encryption uh, of one of the fields um, right at the source before it even gets into Snowflake. So in the past, when you wanted to do s streaming with Snowflake, it's like, well, let's, let's just connect to Kafka. And Snowflake has had a Kafka connector for quite a while that you could essentially connect. It essentially aggregates your events into files that land inside of your uh, cloud storage. And then Snowpipe with auto ingestion essentially would read those files, and ingest that into Snowflake. And then once it's there, you would build streams and tasks, essentially to identify what records have been added to your landing table, and essentially process those to prepare, ultimately, your final tables that you would then uh, share with your business users. But when you look a little closer, though, you're actually seeing that, that you're actually landing the data in three places. First, it lands in a pre-stage of Kafka, then it lands into like an S3 bucket in the case of AWS. And then thirdly, then it lands into the landing table in Snowflake. And then once the data is landed, you had to start building these streams and tasks and tables. So now you end up building like eight different objects inside Snowflake that you have to not only create, but you have to manage and uh, maintain over time. So today what I'm going to show you is how you can replace the Kafka client essentially for a Snowflake client and then stream that data directly into Snowflake. And then we're going to use a dynamic table essentially to take that landing data um, and prepare it three different ways for three different business uses. So the first thing I want to kind of drill in and kind of show you what a Java client would look like. So this is probably a little hard to read. But it is actually, there's four segments. One of is initializing your client, um, creating a connection to Snowflake. The next one is creating a channel, which essentially is connecting directly from 
your client to the actual table that you want to land in. The next step, you actually just start sending data. You essentially create a hash map with your record of data, and you essentially send that to Snowflake. And the last steps is essentially is you can do the error handling to see if there's any challenges, as well as there's an offset, so you can kind of verify that every single record that you created did land uh, successfully in the Snowflake. It also provides you essentially with a bookmark where you can kind of keep track and make sure nothing gets lost along the way. The next thing I wanted to show is, is what does that payload looks like? Um, since this is a simulated uh, client, we had a lot of flexibility in that. Um, but there's some key fields you need for change data capture. So I thought it would be a good idea to kind of walk through those as well. So the first section, um, we're connecting essentially to a database type of system that's emitting events for every single record that is being updated. So there could be one table. There could be many tables. Um, so essentially, it's telling you exactly what changed, you know, what table, where that was, uh, the exact timestamp of when that occurred, what the action was. Was it an insert, update, or a delete? Who did it? And as well, what did the, look, the record look like beforehand and afterwards? The other thing that's very critical as well is the primary key. Um, for this data set, essentially, we used an order number. And we also tokenized it as well. Um, so we essentially, since that was a sensitive field, was the primary key, we use a tokenization, which is a repeatable way of changing the order number to something that isn't sensitive any longer. Um, we also will be encrypting it as another field as well, which provides you with the reversibility um, to then get back to that original order number. So this is kind of a detail of what, um, what it looks like. And since we're using a variant data column um, and JSON payloads, we can be very flexible on what that structure looks like. So the record before will be different depending upon what the structure of your table is, as well as the record, what it looks like afterwards as well. So these are just, just showing some examples. A new order, of course, isn't going to have a before image. It's only going to have an after the commit that that record then exists in the source. And then if you're doing a delete, there's a record before, but there's no record after. So next thing I want to do is kind of show you uh, the streaming ingestion process. So remember, we're doing, with this simulation, there was 200 to 400 million orders that need to be processed during a regular trading day. Um, I'm running here from my laptop. We're going to be sending those various payloads um, here through the Wi-Fi, and into uh, Snowflake. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually create that staging table from scratch. So you can see here, my count is 0. I have a brand new table. I've, I've granted an insert capabilities to my, the role that, that my agent will be running on. It is using key pair authentication for that. And I have a batch program, essentially, that's going to run now. And essentially, right now, it is actually uploading uh, one million records into Snowflake. So you can see we sent one million records in 12 seconds, and it was confirmed inside Snowflake in 16. So now if I go back here to Snowflake, I can run this again. And now you can see I have a million records in here as well. So it's pretty awesome how fast you can get this to work. Um, some of the tests, it varies a little bit, but I was seeing 80,000 rows a second. Um, engineering was also doing some tests on capacity. These are all very small JSON payloads, um, but they are actually testing out at one gigabyte per second, um, which is many terabytes of data over a day if it would, was loading uh, continuously. So the next thing we're going to cover, rather than switching back and forth, I'm going to actually show you um, what this data looks like. So you can see here, here's an update. You can see what that payload looks like beforehand, as well as what it looks like afterwards. And if you say show channels, it'll actually show you 
exactly how it actually was uploaded and give you some metadata details about that channel um, that was created and is active for your client. The next section is on dynamic tables. So I'm going to show one here because we don't want to be switching back and forth um, on the slides very often. So um, I'm going to actually create a dynamic table, which essentially is a select statement. And what I want to show is just the current data. So show the latest uh, order information and get rid of any that have been deleted um, or are stale because they were updated. You can actually wait for the lag period to happen, or you can actually, on demand, you can just say refresh. And then essentially, it'll update that. And now you can see it collapsed those 1 million records to 487,000 records because of those updates and deletes. Filtered those out. And now you can see we've taken out the JSON and uh, used the, col the, the colon notation essentially to select and create the various columns that we want. So we're doing data engineering in that definition to create those different columns to define what we want. The second dynamic table that we want to do is actually saying, we want to see all 1 million of those records. So let's refresh that table. And now we're going to add additional metadata fields that essentially define each of those records. So you can see here, we added some additional columns. We have an effectivity dates um, of when that record was actually the current record. And then we added, you know, is it the latest, true or false? And then the different versions. So we're defining these different tables with just simple select statements. Uh, we're using window functions inside of Snowflake to essentially to use the timestamp to essentially sort the records to find out which is the latest record for that given order ID. And the third one we're going to do is actually a summary, where we're going to summarize and aggregate the information by the 30 different stocks that are in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So you can see here we have 30, 60 total. So we have 30 short order uh, aggregations and 30 long order aggregations. And if we show that, essentially we see the ticker, we see the positions, the minimum price, the maximum price, total shares, and the total value, um, all being created by that. And now, if we go into uh, Snowflake here, go back to my client, I can actually be continuously loading more data and flowing that through. And then Snowflake is going to automatically essentially refresh this and keep all these tables current for me. So now we have that continuous stream of information coming in, and the business users you know, are going to be able to see that data um, in the landing table within a five to 10 seconds, and they'll be able to see the data in those transformed, curated data uh, tables uh, you know, within a minute or two. Can we switch back? So some of you may have already been in some sessions, but this kind of shows these two capabilities all kind of working together with the end-to-end -end type of use case. So when you create a dynamic table, you essentially define, just like you define a regular table, except you add the word dynamic. You add the leg of how long you want to keep that, that uh, how often do you want that table to refresh and keep current. Um, it is actually an incremental refresh process. So it keeps track of how many records have been added since the last time that it was refreshed. And then it's only processing those types of records. So even though we're doing aggregations, we're doing the slowly changing dimensions, we're just doing the current orders and things like that, it's just processing based on what data has changed. And then the select statement essentially defines what we want. So the slides kind of walk through what each of those look like here. But we already kind of showed these live. <clears throat> but you can see, you can kind of do a lot of that transformation all through simple queries uh, and SQL syntax here when you're defining these tables. 
So the fourth thing we wanted to cover is we, what about the people that want to see the sensitive data? We need to see that actual order ID. Um, so Snowflake has a lot of governance capabilities built in, a lot of security uh, to secure data. Um, but we also have people that are authorized to be able to get to that actual value. So what we did for this use case is we actually created a secure function. Um, and the, the actual code that was used on the client, the Java code was using AES encryption. Uh, they actually shared that code along with the configuration that they were using on the client. And we put that into a Snowpark Java function, or UDF. Uh, essentially in Snowflake. So we secured that function. We, gave, we authorized it inside of a PII sensitive uh, schema. And then we created a view for that as well. So now people that are authorized will essentially be able to have an additional column for that. When we originally built this, um, dynamic masking and tags and those types of classifications and other things weren't fully supported with the dynamic tables. Um, but now that we're getting to uh, in the public preview, a lot of these new features have already been added. Um, and there'll be more things coming within dynamic tables for GA. So this really enables you to have this whole scenario. And you can have lots of different tables all landing in that table, break out the different data sets, be able to have different perspectives of the data based on the business use. And based on their roles, they can see certain fields or not fields just using basic Snowflake capabilities. But I think it's key to just kind of show you that we can now do that real-time ingestion. You can do the single row insert type of model. You can capture events from sources and deliver them into Snowflake, and then now do your data engineering inside of Snowflake as well. I also included a few links um, in my slides to kind of walk through this. Like I said, we, this was a uh, hands-on lab. It also was um, a sales engineer training class last week, um, essentially on these new capabilities as well. Um, but the link at the bottom is the key one, because essentially that gives you everything that I showed here today, so you can run this on your Snowflake environment, run it from your laptop, you know, and test it for yourself. One other thing we did with this is people wanted to use this as a sample. Um, for testing, but then they also said, hey, can we connect this to something? Can we use the, a, a different thing rather than just a generator of data? So we actually connected it to MQ series. So we were actually subscribed to MQ, used their client to connect to, and capture messages, and then deliver them into Snowflake. So we kind of created our own MQ connector uh, with this same building block. Uh, we also were reading files for another use case where we're reading files and delivering them into Snowflake. And the third one was actually for an IoT use case. They wanted to simulate um, bearing um, readings uh, off of a heavy machinery to, to, to start predicting you know, when bearings would fail. So that's really all I have to show you today. I hope it's, uh, you're as excited as I am about these uh, new capabilities.